<laughs> All right, here we go. So first fight of the night, we got Abu versus Mark Andre Baru, and uh, I don't think Mark Andre has any wins in the UFC yet. And Abu, he has one win in the UFC, right? Yep. yep. Against Vitor Miranda, so I'm not the greatest. But... No, but yeah, I mean that dude. He he tried to play it safe, and he tried to make the right read, and he got Abu in a bunch of compromising positions, but Abu kind of just kept fighting through it, head down, ducking, throwing, <laughs> rolling around for takedowns, and yeah, he got out of the submission times, and there were a few times where he got uh, Miranda in compromised positions on the ground and started landing some vicious ground and pounds, and it led to a unanimous decision. Now, the thing I noticed about watching the watching both these guys tape is that they both kind of like rush in with their head down and just kind of throw. And you got to think why, like, the UFC's bringing in Mark Andre. If he hasn't won a fight and he got popped by the USDA, why would they bring him in here? And against Abu, you know, I think they're just trying to give him a win. That's my, yeah. like, I don't really, I'm not high on either one of these fighters, but that would be my read. I would, that's why I would go with Abu. And yeah. he actually shows, like, a pace to his fight. He's trying to win the fight. So that could win the fight just alone with the judges. I don't see him getting a finish. I see him winning by decision. And Mark Andre loses a lot of decisions. Yeah, and they've been, they both are seem pretty tough, but seem like they fade a little bit in the third round. So yeah. I can definitely see this one going to decision. I think Abu takes it. I think it's a favorable matchup for him, but I think Bro does uh, present some interesting factors being the taller, bigger guy. Maybe if he has really good takedown defense and keeps it technical, it's just that if you can keep that up for three rounds, which I'm not going to count on for, and that's why I'm picking Abu in this spot. Yeah, and I'm on Abu as well, and also, uh, 35 years old, I don't know how long he's going to be around. So. He's also coming off of a, a pretty lengthy layoff. Yeah, three years, I think. Yeah, but it hasn't been, it was fights pulled out for other reasons and stuff like that. I mean, they're, I mean, their family's pretty sketchy at this point. They say he's been training. Yeah, he's been he training to been, be. He's, yeah, and, and they said he's been training consistently, so. Yeah, maybe we're going to see a better version out of him. He'll probably have a favorable matchup for him. <clears throat> All right. So we're both on a boo. Now we got Shane Young versus Omar Morales. And the way I'm looking at this fight isn't really by technical standpoint. Shane Young, he's not the best fighter in here between the two of them. But I think for the uh, weight cut, and he's, he's definitely faced the competition. He's fought Velkanovski in his debut. I think you also seen that he fought... Uh, Maybe it wasn't this. Maybe it wasn't Shane Young. It was somebody else. But he also fought Ludovic Klein, who I think is going to be doing great things in the featherweight division. Yeah, he Shane Young looked good. He's game. He's really game. He he looked like he's kind of like like the smaller guy, in like a bar fight in in all one of his all his fights. But it, it really stands out against technical strikers. I think. I think people are down on Omar Morales because uh, his his lo only loss in his recent loss to Gigi Chikazi, which was a pretty well contested fight. It was just to, it was just his detriment because Morales let uh, Gigi Chikazi keep it standing at distance the entire fight, which nobody's gonna win that battle. And I think Shane Morales it does need to probably make the bump up to one fifty five. He looks like he's sucking a lot of weight to get that one forty five. He made it. Let's that, see how much he blows up tomorrow, but it really could favor him. The only thing I would advise against is the only thing making it close, in my opinion, is that Morales did play into Jukasi's game plan of striking at a distance. The worst thing he could do in this fight is make it a dog fight to give Shane Young any opportunity to to catch him and follow up and kind of get a quick stoppage. I don't think I see him knocking him out cold. And if it hits the ground, uh, Young's at a, at a very big disadvantage. The guy would go for submissions, but it's more of just kind of like a fishing to get up kind of situation. I think Morales would play there, figure out that ground game pretty quickly. I think, see, I think I like the pick on Omar, but I'm not picking Omar in this one just because of what I told you about the weight cut. Mm -hmm. He does not look good. He needs to go to lightweight. And second of all, I think a lot of people are down on Shane Young because of how he fought in his debut. Not his debut, but against uh, Ludovia Klein. He was just too animated going into that fight. He was too hyped about being on the cover. Super excited, with his yeah. buddies. And yeah. I think he needs, he's going to come in here more relaxed and try to be more technical. And I think you're going to see it pay off later on in the fight. I think he's got to watch out early. But if he can outlast the first round. I don't know. 
Omar is done, I'm telling and you. And the other thing is that this guy, I mean, to invite that kind of firefight, Young keeps his hands really low, and Barras has, has has a high kick in his arsenal. So it's something to look out for. I think Omar Morales is going to get it done inside the distance. I'm pretty sure if you think Young is going to get it done, you probably think it's going to be in the distance. or by Distance or, or decision, I think, okay. either way. I think he can outlast him. I think so. We'll see. We'll see. We're split. I'm picking Morales on this. We're split. Now we got Rodescus versus Michael Ojechuk. Is that how you say his name? Ojechuk. 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 Yeah. So, Ojechuk has a bad gas tank, is what he's known for, but he goes in there and knocks people out. And against OSP, he put it on OSP until he got choked out. And he loses fight by submission, and Bukowskis does not present a submission threat. No. So, where do you Both see... Both these guys show pretty obvious weaknesses in their game. And this is going to be a striking thing, but... I think this is going to be the banger of the night, because... Modesto Bukowskis looks good at range. He's almost kind of like a, like I heard somebody else compare him to like a bargain bin uh, Alexander Racky, which I like that because in his, a lot of his fights before, this guy has won five rounds and he's got cardio in his last, but he's been put in compromised wrestling positions and just kind of held down and out grappled. Can he I take a shot? That's the question. Right. That's the thing. Yeah. And I don't see that being the problem. <laughs> but have, since he's gotten the UFC, he hasn't really been able to finish those fights late, like he was holding on on uh, like a LFA or the, one of the cage warriors, something like that, wherever he was. He was holding on late in these fights, getting out wrestled and clipping these guys late in the late in the fights. And round four, round two, yeah, some of these guys get beaten early. But my point is that he's gonna he's looking for those shots, and they're just not there against the real UFC level. If you saw his first fight in UFC, it was the weirdest stoppage ever, where the guy um, goes only back and they open the door on him, so they call the fight. Which Against the guy who's fighting, the guy who's fighting. Right. He and, won that fight. Yeah, and it was a sketchy scenario to get there in the first place. But so it, he hasn't really had a good proven win in that knockout against uh, Jimmy Crute. Which I mean, Jimmy Crute is the man, and he beat Don Jacek there too. But that was bad what he did to him. And if you look at both of these guys as strikers, and neither of them have great ground game or gas tank. Look at how Jimmy Crute fought them. He had to wear on Old Jacek and then eventually submit him. Whereas with Bukowskis, he had an obvious advantage in strikes and got in there and knocked him out. He basically overpowered him, man. Yeah, yeah. And I think Old Jacek can do the same thing. This guy has got some weird power to him. He's a, he's a scary dude. He's just got weird intimidation. And he, he really is precise with his strikes. When he hits, he finds it again and again. He had like four knockdowns in like 30 seconds in that one fight. Where yeah. He was just battering that guy. The thing is, I think he's so awkward that Bukowskis is going to be trying to be too coordinated and he's going to get clipped. And I would like to if Bukowskis had some kind of wrestling game and, and could implement it, but I don't know that he's going to want to do that. Yeah. And if it stays standing for, I'm going to say, over one and a half, I think Owen J.J. finds it in, in, one, in that first round or two. Yeah, I don't see this fight getting out of the second round. Yeah. I see Owen Jacek winning by KO. Yeah, if it gets late, it could get it could get hairy. I mean, it, it definitely could as far as Chojin get hairy. Both these guys make it really ugly in the third round. The cap gets out wrestling them somehow. But we could look like dummies. But yeah, but I don't know. About yeah, that. I know. that's not how my prediction is going to go with this one. I'm, I don't think either guy's really proven yet. But Owen Jacek has a pretty high ceiling just for the way he strikes. It's just yeah, it's just fun to watch. I think this is also a setup fight for him to get back into the swing of things off two losses. So we're both on OJ Chuck. Jared Gooden versus Abukukar Murgamedov. I think this is cousin, right? Yeah, I think so. Khabib's cousin. So Jared Gooden went to the face off early to cut that extra half pound off. And doesn't really show the best takedown defense, but he has some. But against a great wrestler like Abukabar, who doesn't really do much with the wrestling once he gets it to the ground, he kind of just like stays in position and just kind of waits the round out because his conditioning isn't the greatest. But I think he's just going to be able to dry hump him for three rounds and win a 30-27 decision. Yeah, he changed his wrestling together like, like his cousin does, obviously. But he doesn't have the same ability to pass cards like you were saying. He doesn't really do much with it. And he, what a lot of people were saying is that he likes to kind of let his hands go and they get there, which I think would usually be a problem against Gooden. If he came in like he did against Joe Ben, because that was a really entertaining fight he had against Joe Ben in his debut, Jerry Gooden. And it was back and forth, and it was a technical brawl on the feet. And if they had that kind of fight, Abukar is in trouble. But that's not how it's going to play out. I think Abukar is definitely going to be able to wear on him. 
and as long as he doesn't get caught early, I think he's going to be able to just keep taking him down and taking him down, putting him in compromising spots, and really just edging out a, a decision that's not going to gain him any fans, but good and didn't look good coming into this one. Nah, yeah. I think uh, number <laughs> nine out wins this one by decision, and that's the bet on this one. Agreed, agreed. So, I think there's plus money on that, too. <clears throat> All right, there we go. So now we're on to Alonzo Metafield versus his new opponent, Fabio Charant. Whatever's going on with this fight. Yeah. <laughs> so Metafield got knocked out in his last fight, if I'm correct. And OSP. Against OSP? Yeah, okay. Against OSP, and he lost to Devin Clark before that. So he's coming off two losses. And Fabio Charant is a guy that's had weight, cu- weight cutting issues in his whole career, pretty much. And yeah. he missed weight again, I think. On short notice, you got to give him that. Yeah, but... He didn't look good. Right. So I think, yeah, I think that's the big regardless. Thing. Regardless, he didn't look good. Either way, if it was short or not. So either way, I'm on Alonzo just for that specific reason. I don't really like Alonzo Menafield either. Yeah. But I think he's gonna be able to overpower pretty much do what he wants to have his way. And you could see it finish in this fight, I believe. I don't know, but I think it goes to decision. What do you think? I think Alonzo Menafield definitely poses a lot of he's He's good in a lot of areas. He's got good wrestling. He's got good power. He's got okay striking. His his uh cardio needs work, but the whole thing, the whole idea about this fight is he was supposed to fight William Knight, and they were supposed to fight a couple weeks ago. We broke that fight down. That one dropped out, and then eventually it was supposed to happen again, and then it gets dropped out. So this guy's been ready to fight, and on the other side you got the other guy coming in, Fabio Trent. And he's making his debut on short notice against a guy who's been preparing for a fight for what, two months now. I really like Alonzo in this spot just, just based on that fact. I think he's got it wide enough. Like, he's definitely got to be careful on the ground. Uh, Trent has shown a decent ground game, and he's got to be careful on the feet. He doesn't get tired and he get his hands dropped. But he's finished a lot of fights early, and I think he's set up to, to make a good one here. I don't know why he's getting set up for such a a gift of a fight here when he's supposed to fight William Knight, but you kind of, I don't know, you can't lay your foot on the gas at all when you're training or mentally thinking about it like that, but well, I think he comes in here with more energy knowing that it's a newcomer and he's been ready to fight, he's been ready to put on a show. I think I think what's happening here is the UFC is trying to set them up again, but they're trying to make it both impressive looking like uh, Alonzo Menafield's fighting Fabio, which he should win by knockout, and William Knight just got rescheduled for like two weeks from now. Against somebody else, I forget their name, but I think they're just trying to make it look better for when they fight. Okay. I think they'll probably reset that fight. Interesting so, promotion choice, yeah. yeah. Especially for this to be like that prelim closer, I think there's like there's a decent amount of fights that we we've, we've talked about so far that could have definitely been higher. Than but it. yeah, like you could put the Medeskis, Bukowskis, and Michael Leo and JJ fight in this spot easy. But no, I'm not mad at it. But I think yeah, I think for some reason, all, yeah, like you said, Alonzo's just getting a favorable matchup. He should be able to get it done. Yeah, I mean, as long as he doesn't get lazy on the ground on top and uh, his gas tank holds up good enough, I think he should get it done. All right. Now we have Jamie Malarkey versus Karma Worthy. And uh, Jamie Malarkey is the one one fight I watched him fight against Brad Riddell. That was a good fight. It was a competitive fight. But Brad Riddell doesn't have no takedown defense. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, a favorable, like, stylistic matchup. Yeah. yeah. It was a good fight for Jamie Malarkey, but then he goes out and fights at Francis the ZM, ZM, I think is how you say his name. And both those fights, his third round was like crap. Right? His cardio failed him. And ZM is not really the greatest. Compared to Conor Worthy's strike, Conor Worthy makes ZM look bad. So, Conor Worthy's got some incredible fights on his record. Yeah, and he beat Devontae Smith. Yeah. yeah. So, Jamie Malarkey has what? A negative three? We talked about negative three strike yeah. potential? Yeah, I think he was landing like 1.5, 0.8, something like that, and getting hit over four times a minute. So he's going to get hit in this fight. Yeah, and if Carmen right. Worthy connects with him, it could be a short night for him, for Jamie Malarkey. But it, he's pretty durable. Malarkey's pretty durable. Yeah, I mean, for, for getting hit that many times, you have to be. <laughs> and looking back at the Carmen Worthy versus Luis Pena in the third round, when Luis Pena got sloppy and tired. He guillotined Luis Pena. So you can see something like that similar too. I think Carmen Worthy's live for a submission or a KO in this fight, to be honest with you. I think Larky's ground game, yeah, maybe if it draws out in the, into the latest round, the third round, like you said, something could get caught like that. But I really think mm-hmm. in the first couple rounds that that Carmen Worthy's going to lay it on him. I think 
we are going to see that striking differential pretty clearly. It's not even a power differential. Yeah. When you see these guys strike, Calvin Ridley put people to sleep, but he's a little chinny himself too. So you got to really be worried about what kind of fight this turns into in the last the last minute minute and a half of the fight, especially if Calvin Ridley turned him early and Malarkey implemented a wrestling game plan in the end of the second round in, into the third round and kind of made it a, an ugly uh, wrestling affair. Then you don't know what the judges are going to think and the last minute of this fight are going to come down is Calvin Ridley hits harder or Malarkey's got a little bit more of a gas tank. But like you said, he, he gassed it up too. I think, yeah, <clears throat> I think that uh, this could be fight of the night, honestly. Between all the fights that are on the card, this is probably like the closest contentious fight. Yeah, I think it's hard. Yeah, the hardest to call too. I yeah. So I'm I'm with Carl Worthy, just because he has more ways to win. I think. I'm gonna agree with you. Just his his output's not bad. His power's good, and Malarkey gets hit. Yeah, he so gets hit I, a lot. Especially in the first two rounds, I, I don't like that, and I think, yeah, I think Carl Worthy's either gonna knock him out or win. Win an ugly decision because if it goes into the third round and we're still not seeing anything out of Malarkey. Yeah. I think it's going to implement his ground game some. I think it could be a good live bet. I think Malarkey could wrestle heavy first round, and then the second round is when Carmen Worthy starts to take over the fight. Yeah. And you can that could be another option for betting purposes. So we're both on Carmen Worthy. Now we got Jillian Robertson versus Miranda Maverick. And this is another tough fight to call, I guess, because Jillian Robertson is probably the better grappler of the two. Yeah. But Better overall, better overall MMA fighter, I think, is Miranda Maverick. And yeah. I think it goes back to the Taylor Santos fight. I think Taylor Santos is a better grappler than Miranda Maverick. But I think the more power, like the powerful wise, like Miranda Maverick and Taylor Santos share that. And I think that could be like the similar thing that happens in this fight. If it does go to the ground, I could see this being a stand up fight because Miranda Maverick doesn't let Roberts take her down. Yeah. And Miranda Maverick just wins the stand up because Roberts has no stand up. Yeah, Jillian Robertson, she's been in the game for a little while. We broke this fight down before, and it got canceled. And, yeah, I still feel the same way, but I think Maverick it shows, like, good wrestling and forward pressure. And she can strike going forward, trying to set up a takedown, bring you down, and then control you. But that's really the only way she wins a fight. If you stop her striking by disrupting that forward pressure, stopping the takedowns, and force her to kind of fight with you on the feet, I think that's a bad matchup, and that's what Miranda Maverick's pretty good at here. She has good, she has a good ground game, and that could that could help her get up if the takedown does land, and that could definitely take a little bit out of, of the wind out of Robertson's sails. Because I don't think that if she if she if she doesn't get the takedown in the first round, first and second round, definitely she's definitely going to lose a lot of her momentum coming out of this fight, and you could see a, a knockout from Maverick. I don't think. It's likely. I think she's durable enough, Robertson, to last the fight. But if she doesn't have her way in the first two rounds, it, it definitely could be an ugly stoppage. She could get reckless and yeah. walk yeah. into something. And, and that uh, Miranda Maverick, when she beat Luina Ju- Lu- I can't say her name. Jujua. from Georgia, the chick. She was, she's decent. She yeah, cut she her open. Over Huntington, but I, yeah, I mean... She could do you something. You could like say that. what you want about that, but a lot of people say if it was a guy's fight, they wouldn't have stopped it. Yeah. But I mean, it was, yeah, it was a cut, and it was. I think had a big nerve in there. Yeah, it was a big cut. Yeah, I think yeah. it was a decent stoppage. But you can whether see or not it stopped somebody though, if it wasn't a cut, it wouldn't have stopped her. She wasn't out of it. You know what I mean? No, I'm saying you can see something like that yeah. when she takes down Robertson if she yeah. does and throw elbows and cuts her open. You can see maybe. That could be a playing factor as well. You never know. Well, I just want to see if Maverick, she's a good prospect too coming to this because we're going to learn a lot about her here because she's going to have to defend takedowns and then have some forward pressure for, of her own and back Robertson up against the fence. And when that happens, Robertson is either going to sit there and strike with her, which in that case, she gets finished, in my opinion. But if she does what I think she does, does a reactive takedown, is Maverick experienced enough to sprawl on those? To stop a takedown, pressure up against the fence, and then when she has turned in bad position, you know Robertson's gonna go for that takedown on Maverick. So is she is she good enough or more aware enough? I know she has the skills. Is she aware enough to chain wrestle out of these scenarios and keep it standing for a whole fight? I don't know if I've been confident in a fight like this. So I'm gonna pick Maverick, but it's definitely a test fight. So I wouldn't I wouldn't bet anything. Yeah, I'm on Maverick as well. I just think she has the better. 
a better, uh, higher ceiling and everything. And I think Robertson is probably going to go to Bozo. <laughs> probably. All right, now we got Thomas Almeida versus Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley, this is a fight that scares me just because this dude's legs are made of twigs. Like, I'm afraid, but you got to be on O'Malley here, don't you? It's hard not to pick him, like I said. It's like, I don't know, if you get, you get so confident in picks that you start thinking, like, what if, what if the exact opposite? I do think someone's going to get pitched. But yeah. I don't see, I don't know. Like, this is just the way O'Malley is with his personality, his mentality, he didn't lose that fight against Chita Bear. But that kind of mentality is kind of, it, it translated into the octagon. It's like a, it's a, like a kill or be killed. And he hasn't been killed yet in his eyes, but he was finished in that fight. Yeah. So I think if something happens like that, you're gonna see another stoppage, right? Yeah, and the thing the thing I like about Sean O'Malley, even I think he's the better fighter, but Thomas O'Malley weighed in with the sunglasses, which you never do. So that's signs of a bad weight cut. And he does not look good. His cheeks are like super sucked in. Yeah, this is a uh, I think his first fight back at one thirty five, I think his last fight against Jonathan Martinez was uh, up a weight class at 145, and that was after a lengthy uh, layoff because of two knockouts. Those were against high level competition, Rob Font and Jimmy Rivera. Or one was a decision, one was it, but he got dropped a couple times in that fight. He's been at the top here. There's a lot of hype coming in. He was a favorite against Cody Garbrandt, and I remember watching that fight live. I believe that was Cody Garbrandt's UFC debut. And yeah, when I watched that was a great fight to watch live. You didn't know who was going to win. It was like, this guy has just come off a flying knee knockout. He was doing all that crazy shit in the, in the regional scene. And he was the real deal. And he got flatlined against Garbrandt. Just just kind of starstruck in the UFC, I think. But it was against really good competition. You can't take that away from him. But he's shown that he's susceptible to getting hit early. He's a little bit shitty. And the fact that, like... That what he he just he comes in here with like a striking heavy game plan. He, that's what he is. He's a great striker. And against Jonathan Martinez, he just got completely dominated. And Jonathan Martinez, you you can draw some similarities between him and and O'Malley. O'Malley just kind of does it better. I mean, I don't know if you want to say that yet, but it's just differently. And O'Malley's got a, a size advantage here, and it, a little bit. It looks more than it is, but what it does that he does have is he uses that length a lot better. Than <laughs> A lot better than a lot of people. And I think he's going to use that, switch stances, hopefully avoid any damage to his leg. I think that'll be key. And yeah, if he can keep the distance, I think we're going to see another quick knockout because I think it's it's the path of victory for O'Malley. I, I think uh, also, I'm going to call it here, I think Sean O'Malley comes out and knocks him out for sure. And I think he does it faster than Cody Garbrandt because you know that he's been looking at the fact that he sees Cody Garbrandt in 2 minutes and 53 seconds. That'll be a talking point for his little feud he has with Cody Garbrandt. Because I was looking into it, I was like, really, why does this fight make sense? Because the, the odds show it at such a big discrepancy. Why are they putting this guy in here? He does have a chance when you look at it, because O'Malley's still a rising star. Cheeto Bear is a, like a 15 kind of guy. So Almeida has fought the best of the best. He's fought Cody Garbrandt, he's fought Jimmy Bear, he's fought Rob Font. Well, Being they, that he lost to those guys, I mean, where does it put you? But it does kind of put O'Malley up on that echelon, of at least, like, he's heard the guys that have been in the ring with these guys. So I think it, it, it adds a little bit of star power to O'Malley's record, and I think that's what he needs right here. I think it's a favorable matchup for him. I want I, I think it's going to be a first-round knockout. I just, I mean, you know how there's always a shot. There's always that that fight on the card to yeah. talk to, and this would be the biggest shot. Yeah. I mean, we, we're going to talk about Ngannou and Stipe later, but as much as we don't want to see Stipe lose, if you saw him get knocked out, it wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world. Because you, you kind of... Fighting you, a gorilla. Yeah, you, you're <laughs> in the back of your head when you're thinking about that fight. But my point here is that if I'm, nobody's thinking about how maybe knocking out... Shot him out. Shot him out. If but I mean, they said on the weigh-in show, too, they said that Almeida and Wes sugar of Sean O'Malley a few years ago. He right, the yeah. Guy. He the guy. Yeah. But I just can't see O'Malley losing this fight. Yeah, I think I think he's taking too much damage. I just think the fact that he lost a lot of these by getting really hurt doesn't play a factor for him. I mean, you got to think of that leg as a as a thing to look for. But I'm still picking O'Malley. All right. Now for the co-main event, we got Tyrone Woodley versus Vicente Luque, and uh, Vicente Luque fights with uh, Gilbert Burns. 
another guy that beat uh, Tyron Woolley. Also, I guess he trained with Kamaru Usman. I don't think they train together anymore. I think Gilbert Burns and him are really good friends. Yeah, he's out there at Stanford. He wasn't there for a lot of this fight, though, I heard. But um, how much does Dana White hate Tyron Woolley? <laughs> this guy is this guy's getting set up for fights that he's not going to win. And, I mean, Vicente Luque has got power. He's yeah. got power. It's a different matchup here, at least. At least it's not a grab. Yeah. He so, doesn't have the grappling, but still. So what do you do with Tyron Woodley when you don't have to worry about the grappling? It's not that you don't have to worry about the grappling, because Vicente Luque is, is, a, is a grappler himself. It's a wrestling thing. If Tyron Woodley wants to win this fight, he's been trying to play everything smart, not get hit and do everything right. He can do that in this fight, but he's going to get hurt doing it. He's going to take some damage, and the only thing that's going to win in this fight is, is favorable takedowns with time on the clock to really establish something and eke out a decision. It's just when you look back, when you I'm breaking down this fight and I'm watching these guys play, you watch Woodley's cut last couple of fights and they're boring as shit, but then you look back at Vicente Luque against like Far Marina and Mike Perry, being that these guys aren't at the same level of competition, but they're just fucking exciting ass fights. Like they are they're wild fights. People like the knock Luque that he got knocked out in those fights. But that's because he, he put himself there, yeah. he was there to fight. He man. put himself in the fight. Yeah, if you're and, playing a game and you you just throw hate you're, you're gonna get hit. Tyron Woodley also it just doesn't look like he wants to be in there, honestly. It just is at the point in his career he's like doesn't want to be in there. I don't know. This is a scary guy to be in there with like, with that kind of mindset. Don't yeah. you think? Yeah, Vicente Luca could end it at any time, but Dude, at he's the same, such a pressure guy and like he gets hit but like at the same point, that's what I'm saying. Tyron Woodley's not the guy that you want to test that getting hit by because Tyron Woodley can put you out too. Look what he did. I don't know why, but I'm not scared for him. I don't think the chin's going to be an issue. I this could be the shock on the car that you were talking about earlier, remember? It could be, but I don't know. Fire back, baby. I think the odds are a little too much in Vicente Luque's favor because of those matchups recently. Yeah. But say it, play, say it takes place on the feet the whole time. Vicente Luque is just he's going to out, out, out trade him for sure. There's no way that. Woodley keeps up the same kind of pace on the feet he does. The way he does win is he catches him a couple of times, gets the take down, rides it out. I don't see that happening ever. <laughs> yeah. And Vincent De Luque is too loud. I think Vincent De Luque is going to piece him up, piece him up. He hasn't been finishing these guys. And other than the that weird My River Hurt tap against Colby Covington, Woodley hasn't been finished by these top notch guys. I don't necessarily see Luke doing it. I, I mean, it could happen. He could invest in the body early. If he does, that could help. That could help a lot. Yeah, but I just see Sunday Luke beat the shit out of Tyron Woodley for, for 15 <laughs> minutes straight. Uh, Honestly. I, I could look I could look really dumb saying that Woodley is definitely a live dog here. But, man, it's hard to pick him in this spot. I'm taking Luke. I'm on Luke as well. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so... The main event, we got the rematch, Stipe Miocic versus Francis Ngannou. And I'm going to be on record here live, call it. Stipe Miocic is going to win this fight by a rear naked choke. Take it to the bank. Plus 2,300 odds. Submission. <laughs> Stipe Miocic. You heard it here. You heard it here. I've been excited for this fight. I'm super excited. I'm going to take Stipe in this one. I'm going to tell you what. The fight that happened back in the past. It is in the past. What you've seen from then is is what people are talking about in Ghana. What 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 do you think he's done best? Do you think he's just knocked people out faster? Are you sure some these are better uh, takedown defense there against I mean Curtis Blades was the best wrestler out of the bunch, arguably. I mean you got Kane Velasquez now, but that one I'm not gonna count. It's just too many questions there. But let's talk about the Curtis Blades fight for a second. He, he tried to shoot in on Francis, and Francis countered and hit him pretty bad. But don't you think that he, that Derek Lewis might be that guy? He's just a little scared to get hit by his motherfucker. Yeah. He goes in there and wrestle with him. Yeah. So I don't think Steve A really... And Steve A took like a shot from him already. That's too. what I'm saying. I don't think Steve A is that scared, but he really does need to be careful. But what Steve A does best is, is, is game plan and not make these... It's hard to pick these errors out game. He's hittable, but he doesn't play that game with Francis Ngannou. The first round's going to be wild. I'm just telling you that right now. The first round's going to be wild. You're going to be sweating. 
but I'm very confident in Stipe winning this fight. He opened up as the underdog, and I placed bets on Monday on some sites and got him at like a, like a plus 600 for decision and crazy bets like that. Because if you look at the fight in the past, and Gadu landed uh, 40 strikes, 22 strikes, something like that, in the first round. And then in the next couple rounds, Steve A landed, I mean, and got him landed two, four, zero, and one shot in the fight. You're not going to see that same Ngannou, though, this time. Because no, I'm not going to gas out. That was part of it. You're going to be more hesitant, but yeah. how? How hesitant? But this is the thing. I'm on Steve A with, with you as well. We're not disagreeing here. I would not be surprised one minute if fucking Francis Ngannou just comes out and world stars and takes his head off. I would not be surprised. But that being said, I think that watching the vlogs all week, you know how they do that. Right. It seems like Ngannou's game plan to keep this fight standing is a front kick. And that's not going to work, I'm sorry to tell you. If that's all you got, it's not going to work. You can end up on your ass no matter who you are if you throw a front kick against Stipe. Yeah. I just think that the way he does things, like the, the game plan, I mean, to beat Daniel Cormier twice, or once, yeah, twice since then, and lose to him once, it's somehow just as equally, if not more impressive than knocking out the four guys that Ngannou did in the time he did. And another thing, another thing with Ngannou, uh, I've seen that they were saying this could be the greatest year of, of his career because if Ngannou wins, he could fight the GOAT right now at heavyweight, which is uh, Stipe, and beat him if he wins. And then he has John Jones. July, yeah. July, yeah. So, I mean... The UFC doesn't want Ngannou to win this fight. He's the same thing on the other side. There. Yeah, Stipe's going to fight that. Beating him. Ngannou and then beating John Jones. But Ngannou's not really uh, like that guy no. compared to Stipe, you know what I mean? No, no. no. I think if you're John Jones, you're fucking sitting there at home praying that Ngannou not. Yes, yes. J- J- Stipe really is that good. He's a boxer wrestler and sorry to break the ball on that submission prop, but he's never gone for a submission doesn't in matter. his career. But the dude is just so good at, at feeling out the process and and uh and then making mid fight adjustments. <laughs> Somebody asked his his uh, head coach uh, if they had talked about the uh, adjustments to the body in the uh, DC fight, and they said that they didn't even see that. That was something that he saw in the in the octagon. And that I think is that's crazy. That's some go level shit right there. Yeah, was making those calls against the highest of the high level competition. At, yeah, for the belt, and what he did in the first fight was he took on the 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 beast that was Francis Ngannou coming into that fight. He had all the hype in the world behind him, and he and Steve has been the underdog in all these fights, and he's come out on top. I just think that he he took on the beast the first time, and he showed you how to do it, and that's why I think that's why he had no problem taking this fight again, honestly. And the fact that he came in ten times lighter. And just looks kind of just more rejuvenated and like ten pounds lighter than last time. Yeah, not ten no, pounds lighter than Ngannou. And yeah, he's not just faster and lighter and and moving better, but he's just more intelligent about it. He's not using as much energy. And I don't know if you can say Francis Ngannou's cardio is better, but you can't convince me that he's going to be thrown at the same rate as Stipe in the fourth and fifth round when he doesn't even throw at the same rate to begin with, like statistically. Yeah. So the longer the fight goes on. <laughs> the more I think Stipe comes away with it. And if it goes exactly like it did last time, I think Stipe turns it on at the end and finishes it. Yeah, we're both on Stipe, and you said you're looking for the shock of the night. Rear naked choke, Stipe Miocic. You heard it here. Next week when we talk about it, I'll be like, yeah, guys, I told you. That'd be some wild shit. I'm not going to lie. The money he was there to take. I, I am heavy on Stipe. I have bets on him by decision, late round props to knock him out. I think it's going to happen. I, if he takes him by decision, you're stupid not to pick the plus 400 up. You can boost it on some sites. And that's just what happened last time. If Stipe really just is the better guy and he does the same thing, which is, I mean, you look at what's more, most likely to happen is it's either Ngannou by knockout or Stipe by decision in my eyes. But Stipe is live in a bunch of different ways. More ways to win. Yeah. Better fighter, more ways to win. He's the better fighter here. It just, yeah, it comes down to this power versus overall game plan. So I'm excited for it. It's going to be scary. Be sweat the first scary. round, but oh, it's going to be a great fight. Let's go, Steve. All right, that's all we got. So check our check our site for tomorrow for the picks and uh, predictions and bets that we like.
and that's pretty much all. Have a good night. Good night.